couple of months ago, I had the pleasure of talking to multi-Grammy award-winning producer S1. After having a breakthrough moment producing Power for Kanye West, S1 went on to produce for artists like Beyonce, Jay-Z, Eminem, Madonna, and more. In this interview, I have a conversation with S1 about his life and growing legacy as an artist. Honestly, I followed you since like 2009. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, when you did uh, that project Cloud 19 with Braille. Yeah, man, I, that was I, I love that project. That, that was, was I, I listened, listened. That was my my so, uh, sophomore year of college that I was listening oh, to. Oh wow, that. that is crazy. Yeah, me and me and Braille, we had a we had a good time uh, putting that project together. It was. The way it came about was was pretty dope. Like we just randomly met. I think he may I think he may have just reached out to me on uh, email, and our conversation started into us working on music together, like with no expectations. And uh, eventually, we had a project. It was like, yo, let's put this out. Uh, we we put it out ourselves, and then and then the intent behind the project became uh, it it made it special because. Uh, like when we toured for that project, we basically went to prisons, we went to homeless shelters, you know, we went to, uh, you know, just these, these people where people needed to be encouraged and people needed to be motivated. And we performed a couple songs and then we were able to like speak to these people and be able to impact them, man. And it was so, for me personally, it was so therapeutic just to be able to be of service to, to, to others in need. And um, and that's when I really started to develop like my my purpose of just wanting to always encourage and impact and, and inspire you know people because everybody needs some type of uh, just encouragement and we all need it you know and no one's exempt from being um, uh, disappointed or discouraged at any moment in their lives in their lives. I agree with that, and I think. I was actually watching video of little pieces from that tour. Oh, this dope. <laughs> Last night, yeah, I was like going through uh I just looked up the project on YouTube and uh and I just yeah, found like these old old like camcorder quality oh, yeah. stuff and uh I was surprised. I was like, first of all, I was like, damn, is that what cameras looked like back then? Like it seemed nicer. <laughs> <laughs> And then two, I was just like, I was seeing like the energy um, that it was, you know, that you guys had that raw energy, to, you know, even though you weren't in like the biggest uh, venues at all. Yeah, yeah, man, it was it was very uh, intimate, but you know that was one of the things when back when back in my the cloud, six, uh, I mean the uh, cloud nineteen days and the, uh, like my group strange fruit project was like no matter whether it's 10 people or a thousand people like always give your all because you never know who's in the crowd that you could uh, have an impact on their life you know so uh, so yeah that was always the mentality when performing man that's great can you talk to me a little bit more about uh, Strange Fruit Project yeah Strange Fruit Project was uh, was me and my cousin uh, Miss Baby man it's something we it's a group we created uh uh, we created back in 2002 and um, and yeah it was just a, a thought we, we was always recording because we had a group called Symbolic Elements and uh, you know that group transitioned into Strange Fruit Project because we added two more members my guy my own and this uh, female vocalist by the name of La Soul and they were all from Waco Texas as well and we just we was well, originally this this project was supposed to be uh, an EP. It's like let's just record five songs and, and put it out as just an EP. But we was loving the vibe so much, we kept recording and we had an album. Uh, so we put this album out ourselves, and it started to take off. And um, you know, over time, once people start to catch on and the word starts to spread through forums like OK Player and, and underground hip hop, um, you know, things start to take off for us, and we started to uh, tour. But the tour. Uh, you know, uh, out of the country and, and within the country as well. And uh, was that the tour where did you do a stop in Brazil at all? Uh, no, never went to Brazil. I, I, we did Germany, we did Prague, 
Um, oh, I, I love, love Prague. Prague. I've been there yeah, once. Yeah, Prague was nice, man. Amsterdam, and and then and then of course like all over the U.S. But um, and, and then and then what's crazy is we was touring, you know, uh, with with a lot of other our friends that was on the comeback as well, like Blue and Exile. Uh, oh Al- man, I love those. I love those guys. Aloe Black and uh, all L.A. Yeah. Yeah, from my all from LA. Yeah. Wait, what was the, what was the last name you said? Um, uh, Miguel. Yeah, Miguel was 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 uh he was with us on some tours too. So we was really? all man, just trying to yeah we was all just on the road like just trying to you know uh, become something in 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 that in the hip hop world man and and it's just uh, amazing to see like where we've come from and then also like Allo Black having his success and then Miguel who's like R and B superstar right? right now, yeah, yeah. So it's crazy, but we knew then that we uh, that we all were in just right company, man, because we all had that mentality of just loving what we wanted, loving what we did. Uh, but then also just trying to always put ourselves out there, regardless of what uh, what hard uh, times and 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 uh, trials would come our way. It's like overcoming that, and then you know we. It was always success or some type of achievement that we were possessed on the other side of that, you know. So we were able to push through and, and, and get to where we were trying to go, man. So it's, that's good to see. Um, but, yeah, man, Strange Food Project, like I said, that, that came from that. And then also uh, in the process of us building Strange Food Project, we were building these bands of people who we respected, like Questlove or The Roots and you know, he got a hold of it. We be- he became a fan of the group. And then he passed it to Erica Badu. She became a fan of the group. And we started working with her. So it was a little brother. Like, I, you know, we, we love little brother. Those those are my guys to this day. Ninth Wonder, uh, Pooh, and Fun. You know, uh, yeah, so it was, it, was, it was a really great moment. And it was just one of those things where uh, that seed was being being spread. I love hearing all the names. All the names that you just said. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I always like reflect back on that. Just you know, us we just had dreams of doing this and then like you say, we like I said, we never stopped and we never threw in the towel. We just stay persistent and you know, um you know, we 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 was able to uh be blessed to do what we love to do. I love that that scene. And I'm glad that you're a part of that, that you're able to for me, like listening to that when I was 19, 20, like that's almost like I wouldn't even expect today to be talking in any fashion about those those people at all. <laughs> it's crazy, right? I feel like now producers, the talk about producers and stuff, people are really respecting it more than they did 10 years ago. Yeah. Which is good to see, and especially when young producers become stars, you know, and you hear their producer tags, and all of a sudden, yeah, all of a sudden, it's like having a feature. Yep, um, that's exactly what it's like, yep. Yeah, and, and I, so I'm really happy to see that, and so, you know, just like our conversation right now is, you know, I want to bring that content to, uh, to my fans, but also just fans of hip hop in general who I think overlook this aspect. I know people want to talk about the bars and they want to talk about, you know, who's the best lyricist or who's the best, makes the best hits or all this stuff. But it's like, okay, but like, what about the soundtrack? That's, that's, that's amazing, man. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're doing that. Yeah. And I'm glad, like I said, I'm glad that you're, you're taking the time for me to talk to you because I love talking to people who really know, really know what they're talking about because they live it. You know, I'm, I'm learning to be a, a producer. I'd say I'm like uh, somewhat mediocre right now, <laughs> but, but I was terrible. I was absolutely terrible. I was so terrible that my that my friend to, told me like, hey, and he he's he's a whiz at it, and he was like, look, like just like stick to the videos. <laughs> and so and so because you said that, I was like, nah, I'm gonna keep working, and I've gotten a lot better. I haven't been able to do it every day since he said that. If he would, I'd be amazing by today. Yeah. No, right. that, that's, that's dope that you kind of reverse that because I've always been that way. Um, like, I've always been a take my failures, take my rejections that I've had and turn it into let's get back to work and, like, really show show what I'm capable of. Or let's get back to, to growing and evolving and using that as fuel to make me better. 
you know, um, so that's that's what that reminded me of when you said that. It was like, okay, because he said that, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually become good at it. <laughs> Seeing your growth, like I said, from all of the people that we talked about to today, is a really perfect example of that grind. I appreciate that, man. It definitely was a grind. It definitely was, man. A lot of a lot of years. Um, um, a lot of years putting in work, but also like just going through a lot of the disappointments and a, a, a whole lot more failures than than uh, achievements. You know, mm-hmm. but all, but all of that was building like the character and building the thick skin and and actually realigning me with my focus. And, gotcha. Uh, yeah, it was realigning me with my my, my, my passion and my purpose. And uh, you know, as as time progressed and, and I started to um, achieve things or achieve greater things than I was, because I was always having small successes along the way that was taking me to the next thing. Right. But as I as as time passed, I started to look back mm. and see that I really needed those things because that those uncomfortable moments. And those yeah. painful moments, that's when I was really mm-hmm. growing and evolving and getting better. You know, it, as bad as it makes you feel, like it, there still was a lot of growth in the pain and in, in the disappointment. You know, so I needed that. And even till this day, man, I still say, like I, have, I actually have a chapter in my new book called No Failure, No Feel. And it's, it's speaking specifically on that, like mm-hmm. turning, those, turning those failures into fuel to get you to where you're trying to, uh, to where you're trying to go my book was a perfect perfect opportunity to be able to highlight those moments that got me to the good moment mm. you know so I, so I focused more on the the setbacks that got me in the process that got me to the achievement as opposed to focusing on the achievement I thought the process of getting there was more important so I wanted to highlight that so that's really what the book is it, you know, I think it gets worse and worse as like more like the concept of like instant stardom and instant success, especially through social media. I think I think people are mostly mostly younger people. Uh, so I'm 30, so that would be oh well, I'm, I'm no, I'm gonna be 30 this year. So that would probably be people probably around like early, like getting out of college age. You know where where they're like they don't really understand or they're not really cut from the cloth. Of people who are like, no, no, like you got to grind every day when you're doing bad, when you're doing good. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. It really does not stop. You know, it, 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 and it's a mind, it's a mindset and a lifestyle change to where, you know, you really have to be in it. I remember the point uh, back in like 2008 when I left my corporate job and I had a wife and, a fa- and two boys that were my responsibility and I remember at that moment it's like okay it's not only me that I have to take care of I have three other responsibilities I have to make this work so my actions changed and my and it was it was I had like a uh, like a battery in your back oh bro I had this battery that I couldn't have gotten if I was if I had remained comfortable so it really pushed me and although it, it was some bad times within that like right. all of that was 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 shaping the person that I am today and the producer that I am today, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it it, it it I had to step it up. I had to step it up because I didn't have that uh, I didn't have that parachute. I didn't have it, man. So I had to make it work, bro. <laughs> you know, and that and that's really what it is. It's really like jumping and on your way down, figuring out how are you gonna stay up or not hit the ground <laughs> when you started making the transition well and for those that don't know you started getting uh, being able to work with Kanye around was it end of 2009 beginning of 2010 how did that transition happen where it's like all of a sudden you're like hey you know Kanye wants to work with you how, how did that go well with me it was every little step that I was taking or every seed that I was planting, it was taking me to the next point of my career. And what I mean by that is like, so all my work was leading me to certain individuals. So, you know, working early on, Strange Food Project, which leads to 
people becoming fans in the underground and working with like a ghost face or a little mm. brother and for instance a little brother that relationship with Fonte is how he introduced me to Ron Fest you know and Ron Fest uh, of course prolific songwriter he was working with Kanye and um I started working with Ron Fest and he's the one that actually introduced my music to Kanye you know uh and it was just and that came from a situation of of me looking out for him um on these beats that he wanted to use for his album and he felt like he should uh be a, a return the favor return the blessing to me by putting my music in the hands of Kanye and once he did that that changed the whole spectrum and Kanye mm. loved my stuff and he and he I got a text from Ron Fest one day and the text said Kanye is loving your stuff he just said he's about to change your life and Oof. I got yeah I got that text from from Ron Fest and then a couple days later I got an email from Don C who was managing Kanye at the time and right. uh and and he he was like yo your your you, your flight is 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 ready to come to Hawaii we ready for you to come to Hawaii, basically, to work with Kanye. Um, so I, yeah, so I ended up in Hawaii working with uh, Kanye up for the uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy album. So you land in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. What's going through your mind when that happens? You're like, okay, oh, I'm, man. Not, I'm so, not home no more. Oh, so much, man. Like, that flight, it was like a six-hour flight. And I remember just thinking to myself, like, what is going on here? Cause, Cause, prior to that, I had had some some disappointments on some projects I thought I was gonna make, and I was so focused on these projects that I was like, oh, I gotta make these, and all three of them fell uh, fell uh. through the roof, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make those projects, and then all of a sudden, out the blue, something that I wasn't even expected, and I'm I'm now in the moment of being on the plane headed to Hawaii to work with Kanye, so it was like a. a it was uh it, i was in shock i was really in, on that flight i was in shock and, and there were so many different questions that was running through my head like okay how is kanye gonna be to work with you know is he gonna be easy to work with you know i, I knew he liked my stuff but it was just all these unanswered questions that i was trying to answer on that flight and you had a good amount of time to think about that, so yeah, I did. I really did. So I, I meet him. I, I'm I'm in the studio with him and Ron Fest. Uh, we introduced our uh, Ron Fest introduced us to each other, and then at that moment, he's like, "Yo, loving your beats." Um, I already recorded to one of them. Uh, I'm gonna play it and let me and tell me what you think of it. So he plays the joint, and it's the power joint. And, and and mind you that it's completely different from what it is now like it was very stripped down um, mm. and the chorus was different and the verses were different but it was still amazing <laughs> and I remember listening to it while he playing it to me and in my mind I pretty much blacked out because all I'm thinking is man I cannot believe I'm listening to Kanye rap over my beat and he's huh. in the room with me playing it for me and it was just this this this, this surreal moment, man. Of, because because I, I'm a big fan of Kanye, and I always have been. So I remember, uh, I I remember actually going in the store and purchasing College Dropout and, and being in the car listening to it. And then when late registration, yeah. I remember these moments and how impacted I was by these albums. But now I'm in the room with him, and he's playing one of my tracks that he's rapping over. So that can kind of tell you. Um, the excitement uh, and how much in shock I was by hearing that. <laughs> was that an ego boosting moment or a humbling moment? It was both. It, it was it was both, man. And, and with me, like I'm, I, I'm, I'm a spiritual person, and I know that it was nobody but God that that led me to be in that room mm. that day. You know, because, cause, you know, like, it's not an easy thing to get in rooms with people of that character. But it, it let me know that every little thing that I was doing along the way within my 14, 15 years prior to that moment was the right thing. Even when I didn't know or I was like, man, you know, why am I, why is this things happening as fast as they should? Like, in that moment, it was like, it made everything 
uh, it, it made me realize that everything was for a reason, the good and the bad that I had went through. It was for a reason to get me to that moment in that room with him that day. Mm. Yeah, it, it redirected. Things were redirecting itself for me to end up where I was supposed to be, which was in that room to 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 be able to hear Kanye play this song for me that he had recorded of mine. What part um, was mostly your part? Was it, I know you got the, where at least there's that drum break in there. And then yeah, yeah, it was, it was Afro America sample or something. Yeah, it was it was the core. It was like the drums, the sample, the the chanting samples, uh, you know. And then I, and then Kanye pretty much took that and then just like did his his magic to it. And did he add that twenty like, first century? Yeah, he, he sample? added he added that that sample. I was actually in the room when he added it because the song is playing, and he's at the he at he's at his ASR ten. He's just going through samples and just trying different things. And I remember when he hit that, and it oh. actually when he hit it, it just played perfectly with it. And we looked at each other and we're like, "Oh, and wait!" So are you so telling I, me that he had these moments like chopped up and ready, or he's yeah, he, just he, he, yeah, he just has like a, his his sample collection is is a, is huge. It's like oh a vast God. amount to where he's just going through like like ton, like like tons of samples. And he's oh, that's trying amazing. different things, and yeah, his ear is so uh, amazing, man. To where, uh, and it was that moment of like hitting that, and it it fell in the right place at the right time, and it was like, oh, this is mm. something. And I remember just sitting there in the room with him as he's like chopping it, and uh, you know, truncating the sample to make it fit perfectly. But yeah, he, he was just going through it like effortlessly, just chopping it how it should be. And uh, yeah, that became a moment, man. That became a moment. His his ear is crazy, bro. I mean, it's, obviously it's crazy just by looking at his catalog of, of music, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I, le- I learned a lot just being around Kanye, man. What about you in regards to equipment? What moment inspired you when I was like, oh, okay, I'm actually gonna work with these machines and I'm gonna make some music? Like what? What did that for you? Um, it wasn't it, for me. It wasn't until maybe like my senior year of high school, uh, and okay. I, I, I relinked with one of my cousins uh, who was who was missed who was missing the Strange Fruit Project, and he was hip hop to the core. He was an MC. You know, he had all the underground tapes. You know, and when I. Uh, was around him I just started to pick it up because I it was just a certain feeling I got from listening to like these Red Man and Wu-Tang and all this stuff he would turn me on to uh, and that's what kind of led me on this rabbit hole of figuring out how artists were making their own original or producers were making their own original music because when we started our group we were just using other people's instrumentals you know and just recording over that uh, B-side, you know. I mean, as was very popular back then. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We was just doing that, but I was like, man, how are people doing? That? Like, I want to make our own, you know. So that's what triggered me um, going down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out, like, how are people using? Well, I mean, what are people using? How are they doing it? And uh, stumbling across, you know, producers like Bomb Squad and Pete Rock, and and getting more into like Dre and his sound and. Just really listening and studying and, and and really dissecting music as a whole and just trying to figure it out. Do you see it as a science or a sport? Uh, both. Uh, there's definitely a science to it. Um, you know, it's, it's all math. Like like creating and making like making music is math. But at the same time, there's a uh, the sports side is just the loving it, you know. So I think there has to be a certain love, and, and you gotta, I gotta, you gotta be passionate about it. And I was, I was definitely like drawn to it. Once I got in that world, it was like, oh man, this, this is therapeutic to me. You know, it, it was just something about it that could take me away from whatever I was dealing with in my personal life. Uh, music was my getaway from that. You know, so and I, and I just love doing it. Nobody has to like make me do it. So yeah, I, I would say it's both. It's the science behind it, but then also as a sport as well. 
I know that when you started working with Kanye, obviously you had a lot of Christian and spiritual fans. And I remember seeing, you know, hesitation where people were like, what's he doing? He's working with Kanye. Did you hear that from like people like in your life, like face to face? Um, not face to face, but I got it a lot like in form because I was big on in forums and uh, just going on forums because I was always like socializing and uh, you know uh, just meeting people in these forums like just other creatives, right? Uh-huh. You know, and then fans too, like people. You know, the people. Uh, I'll, I'll just say that when the power when power came out. As much praise that I got for it, I got so much backlash too, and most of that was from the the holier than thou community. <laughs> right. Yeah, I got a lot of that, and it and, and it bothered me. It bothered me because it made me start to question if working with uh, you know more commercial and secular artists was was acceptable, or what, or, or if it was if it was right for me. You know, but you know what? Uh, what changed that was me going back out to Hawaii to work with Kanye and spending like a week with him and coming back home. And the first email uh, that I received from Kanye, it said, Yo, S, thank you for coming out. Um, enjoy working with you. Man, I just love your spirit. It's, it's mm. something about your spirit I just love. And in that moment, I was like, Okay, I get it now. I think that was God's way of telling me that no matter who you work with, you just be you and let that be of effect to them and let that impact them the way you are, you know, and it's, and it's about me just being me, whoever, who, no matter who I work with and letting them see that light, letting them see that light through me, man. And you just never know how you are affecting people, you know? So I, so that moment right there was everything I needed to see that and hear that from him. And that was my answer. Like, okay, I can. I, I'm supposed to work with these people because these people, you know, uh, th- this is where I'm able to like really uh, show my light and be a service. To, not not only be a service, but be a light, so they can see the difference. Uh, and and that and that's really what that was, man. It was just uh, just having moments of that, just just reassuring. But yeah, I worked uh, Jesus guilt trip on Jesus. And then watch the throne, murder the excellent. Then the power joint, and and then a lot of, of course, unreleased stuff that we did that 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 never made it, you know. But uh, but yeah, I, I was I was a part of some some special moments, special songs. Is there anything you can say about unreleased stuff that doesn't break some sort of contract? Uh, I mean, I've, I mean, I've done songs with uh, uh, I, I, where we had steel stuff. Kanye was actually going to uh, executive produce a Seal album. And I don't know what happened to it, but this, these songs were amazing, bro. And yeah, we, we never saw the light of day of it. But uh, Man, I love Seal as a kid. My dad used to play Seal all the time. He was amazing, and I've always knew of him, but until we started working on that is when I really could see like how special he was. You know, because like I said, these songs were like light years ahead of anything that was out at that moment and uh, so I, I was I was um, blessed to be able to work on that man I was, I was definitely um, I'm, I'm thankful to have been a part of that that was yay and, and who knows I don't I don't know what's happening with the songs but yeah so then after Kanye who is your next big cl- uh, person you work with uh, so from Kanye I think it went to the murder of excellence because at that point after I did power um, I, I signed to Kanye's very good beat production company, so I was I was I was on that for like maybe three years or so, uh, two and a half three years. But after that, I was just always working on stuff with him. So I think it was the I think it was the Wash the Wash Your Throne album, you know. Um, and then from there, because we went to like Australia and London to work on Wash Your Throne, and both times or, or both. Uh, times we were out, Beyonce was there, so that's how I was able to meet her. And then after Watch the Throne, she flew me out to New York to work on her album for with her. You know, I do remember. And and which was was it best? Oh, God, best thing I, I never had. Best thing I never had. You, you did that, yeah. Yep, yep. So um, 
so yeah, did that, and and then from there it was just just a bunch of things, man. From like Fifty Cent, and then went over here to Eminem. So yeah, things just started to snowball, man. And and um, and I was just work at that moment. I was just working on a lot of different things. What was it like working with uh, Gladys Knight? Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. It it was actually one of the most uh, stressful too. And only because I put a lot of pressure on myself because of who she is and just the history. And I knew that I had to uh, to, to to do to do it justice for what we were working on. And it was a lot of pressure. And she put a lot of pressure on me too because um, once we once we started working and really building like a, a really solid relationships she just put so much trust in me and it was like hey whatever whatever you want to do do it and wherever I need to be you just let me know I'm and we would be in meetings me her her husband who manages her and then my guy of beer and every question that she would ask you would be like yes what do you think or what do you want me to do <laughs> and 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 it was just like and so it really taught me that I needed to, to step up and and really walk in my gift you know, because she was putting his trust in me, and I didn't want her to feel like I was uh, insecure in delivering what she wanted, or, or you know, a, a great product. You know, so uh, so it, that that was a learning moment too. But the great thing about working with Gladys too is after we did the song, um, I actually went on a promo tour with her. So you know, we would do like uh, we did like Sway in the Morning and The Real and, and all these shows. You know, and I was able to be with her, and we were doing the 5 a.m. lobby calls and going to these places, be out all day, back to the hotel at midnight, and then wake up in the morning and do the same thing. You know, so that was an experience because, you know, just hearing different stories she was telling me, and and she's so, um, you know, she has such an um, amazing spirit, man, just with such a godly spirit. And, wow. And, uh, yeah, and it was just it was just amazing just to be in her presence and to hear certain things and and just to see her even at the level that she's on and, and iconic and legendary as she is, her integrity is uh, on another level. Just the level of integrity at That's that beautiful. stage of her, of her career was just very humbling. I don't want to frame the question in a way that makes you. I don't want you to pick a favorite, but on your bio where it says after Kanye you already talked about Beyonce Beyonce Gladys Eminem but as still leaves Jay Uzi Drake Young Thug and Madonna okay what was the what was the most interesting story from those from the rest of those uh let me see that's, that's actually good I mean I, I would say like how the Drake record came about um that was basically cause uh uh, and I'm talking about the Ice Melts joint. And me and my homie, Super Mario, we did the beat. But the beat was originally for Young Thug. So Young Young Thug had that record, as his record. Um, then we hit it up and was like, yo, okay, this is going to be Young Thug's single because Drake is hopping on it. So we like, oh, this is crazy. And a couple of weeks later, it's like, okay, now this is going on Drake's album because Drake wants the record and it's going to be featuring Young Thug. <laughs> So it went through all these different phases of who was going to use the song, who was going to be featured, is it going to be a single, is it not, is it going to be an album cut. So that was an interesting... Uh, that's awesome. That was, yeah, that was an interesting three-week, and that's like within a three-week span, and it, it wind up being on uh, Drake's More Life album. Yeah, I had, I had a blast working on that, man. Uh, uh, me and Super Mario, man, we have, we have a blast working on stuff together. How long have you been working uh, with him? Uh, that was, I guess, probably about like a couple years, man. I think the first joint we worked on was the the Wyclef Jean joint. He he produced that record, but uh, he used like some of my samples, so I was able to get a a a, a, a production credit on it or an additional what? production credit. Yeah, and then from that moment we started working together. I, I like Douglas, man. He's he's dope. I remember first hearing. Uh, all about the money. I think that joint was kind of like made me, made my ears raise a little bit. I'm like, yo, this is that that made me a fan. That song made me a fan, and then I started 
listening, going back, listening to more, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, he's actually dope. What's a dream collaboration? I would say uh, Rihanna. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm a Rihanna fan, man. I would love to do something with Rihanna, you know, and I know it's just a matter of time. So, but yeah, that, definitely Rihanna. That's a good dream. That's a good dream right there. <laughs> and, and it's then most likely it's a guaranteed hit when it happens. Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. She, 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 she knows it. When I first came in the game, when I first started producing, uh, I was producing for the producer. You know, and one of one to impress, you know, producers, you know, as opposed to making stuff for artists, you know, and not not knowing that an artist's voice is another instrument that's going to be. So if I have a, a beat that's full and no more space for instruments, then there's no room for a vocalist, you know, so it's like carving out uh, a, a certain space, even for an artist to be able to hop on it and have space to do what they do and create melodies and things like of that sort speaking of space because you were working on uh guilt trip on on yeezus was there a lot more talking about space no it wasn't it was just um i started i started that idea um in the room while with my headphones on while jay and yay were recording to another song i started the idea and Oh, it was, was there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because it was. It, I was. Oh, so I did the guilt trip beat within the Watch the Throne session. That was actually a joint for Watch the Throne, but they didn't use it for there. But Ye was like, "Yo, I'm keeping this for. My, I'm saving this for my album." You know, so that's how I wind up being on Easy. And then I heard right that Travis Scott did something. Yeah, different. and then and then and then Travis Scott came in and yeah, he worked the drums on it. And of course, you got incredible Mike Dean who to, who added some. Some, uh, his flavor on it as well and um, that became the song man can you say a little bit about about your book so uh, so yeah I just released my book uh, called Pray Focus Plan Execute a memoir by S1 uh, and it is a memoir because every chapter basically highlights um, a specific moment of my life and career you know whether it be you know, where I grew up or me starting my first group or when I first um, uh, start diving into uh, producing or the life-changing moment when, with Kanye or working, the stressful times I had the week I was with Beyonce working on her four album or working with Gladys Knight. Like this book covers so many different things, but with the book, I wanted to make sure that I not highlight the achievement as much, but more so the process of disappointments and setbacks and failures that it took to get to those achievements. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so the so the, the the book is basically every chapter is a story, and at the end of the story, there's a reflective moment, and this is basically my insight and me looking from a bird's eye view on reflecting on this story and actually connecting the message with the experience. You know, so uh, so yeah, I, I, I've, I've been man, the feedback has been amazing like super overwhelming about you know really what the purpose of the book was for is just to encourage and motivate people and let people know that it's no different from me than uh, from them and you know as long as you have a dream and I specifically say pray focus plan execute because those were the in all my achievements those four things were always present and I realized it was a consistent practice of all those things that led me to uh, every one of my successes. That's beautiful, man. That's that's exactly the stuff I want to hear. So I'm I'm picking that up. Uh, where? Um, yeah, so physical the, online. So the, so the, yeah, so the physicals of uh, right now they're available uh, only for me at symbolicone.com. S y m b o l y c o n e dot com. Uh, but my eBooks are available on Amazon, Apple Books. Barnes and Noble, um, all, all the digital retailers. I have an audio book that's dropping in the near future, like super soon. Uh, and same I, book, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I just finished the audio book. I'm just, I'm just preparing to release it. You know, so I have that as well. And then there's that's, that's going to be a little, some little music in and outs on that too. 
So just to add a little bit more value to the audio book. That's awesome. So what, what's one last thing that you would say, especially to all these aspiring artists and maybe not those aspiring, those who just want to learn? Uh, what would you say to them if you had like 20 seconds to be like, yo, what's, <laughs> tell them what's up? Uh, man, just always have vision and, um, you know, see things before it actually happens. and speak things, speak great things, man. So many situations I had to where uh, my wife and I, we would speak it and it would actually come through, come true. Or we would write things down and then two years later we would be like, oh snap, we put, we actually put this down. So I, I really believe that seeing things and writing things, da- writing things down, you make it real. And then your actions realign with what you write down to get to where you're trying to go. You know, so uh, yeah, have vision and 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 um, and see it through. Thank you very much, S1, for taking your time. Uh, I hope everyone who listened uh, enjoyed it, and uh, I hope to talk to you soon in the future. Man, appreciate it, bro. Have a good one, man. Thanks, man. You too.